The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest-lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is the Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, December 5, 2020, live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage. Today we celebrate the late, great Winston Churchill's 146th birthday with the late hour. Brand ambassador to Davidoff, Shia Goldberg, joins us as we discuss the facts of Davidoff was commissioned to put a cigar out in honor of the most celebrated cigar smoker of all time, Sir Winston Churchill. How does something like that happen? We're going to find out. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority, now in its 11th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. And I think this is, uh, it's true. Uh, the 2020 winner of the best background behind the person coming on the show, those that are watching uh, via YouTube or Facebook Live or any video portion, what a beautiful background. Um, Shia Goldberg, welcome to the Cigar Authority. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. Where are you? Uh, I'm actually, So this is actually, we set up a, like a media studio ah. in, the where, in the warehouse in Florida. So okay. I can't take full credit for this. This is a uh, company material. Oh, it looks dynamite. Yeah, looks it dynamite. Does. Okay. Uh, very nice. Set up a little studio because this is a company with some bucks. And when they do stuff, they do stuff right anyway. I mean, it's always uh, top notch of everything. Um, looks real good. Um, we had you scheduled actually to be sitting right up here with us. Uh, I wish it happened. But uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, thing that's going on uh, as brand ambassador, a new brand ambassador to Davidoff. Um, you had a, a little different um, life than I think you expected to have. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, yeah. First off, let me just apologize again. You know, this uh, this time of year, um, it's especially difficult. I think being from Florida, the, the rest of the country is not real happy about us visiting. Um, that being said, yeah, it's been interesting. Um, the company is, 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 as you all know, is, is very good about pivoting and, and, and making things go well, no matter what the circumstances are. So um, we've adjusted really well. Uh, I've been pretty impressed as their adjustments before I even joined the company. Um, so we've been doing a lot of virtual stuff, a lot of video content. Uh, it's certainly um, a, a close second. I would definitely prefer to be there in person have the honor of meeting you all, um, but I'm happy to be here virtually is, is in, in the circumstances. Okay, and that's what you signed up for. I mean, a, as a brand ambassador, you're going around to, you will be going around seeing the stores and things like that. That's going to be your main thing, right? Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the right. idea is is to be in the in the market, on the roots, in the ground. All right, so be forward looking. Uh, be It'll be uh, Spit it out, Junior. Yeah, it'll be exciting to <laughs> to to get to meet you and uh, see you around as these things uh, clean up. Uh, as it turns out, I think uh, you made the right call not coming up here. We're expecting a foot of snow. Yeah, uh, has begun now. So uh, this is, will be our first major uh, s uh, snow that'll happen this year, and um, here it comes. So it's good you're there because you would have probably been stuck, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, you are not, you're new to Davidoff this year, but you are not new to the cigar industry, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I've been in the business approaching a decade now. Wow, um, okay. So um, predominantly on the retail and the hospitality uh, side of things. So most recently, I was running the um, Casa de Monte Cristo in Brickell in Miami. Uh, in fact, um, for the, the Super Bowl, for the Cam Newton Super Bowl party, I, I believe we met very briefly. Uh, last year. All right. Yes, I was there. No kidding. All right. All right. Cam Newton, and then later became a New England Patriot. Hasn't gone all that well as I as I as hope, but uh, 
Uh, he's an interesting cat anyway, but great. If it, if it well, went, you, if it you went, made the trade happen at least. Good yes. Yeah, if it went well, Dave would have taken credit for the signing. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was something going on there anyway. All right, I want to light it up. Uh, Winston Churchill, this is the late hour Toro. Mr. Jonathan chose uh, this cigar himself uh, as his favorite. This is what he wanted to smoke. So uh, what, what do we uh, know so, about this bag? As Dave mentioned, we are smoking the Davidoff Winston Churchill late hour, which is manufactured in the Dominican Republic by Davidoff. The size they were lighting up is a 6x54 Toro, featuring an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Mexican vi- binder, and Nicaraguan Candega Visos tobaccos, as well as Visos from the Dominican Republic. A single cigar will set you back $20.59, while a box of 20 is $387.99, which comes out to just $19.39 per single. It's a savings of almost $27, or 6% off the box price, on TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. 54 ring gauge. Yeah, it's, <coughs> it's a hefty, uh, thick one here. And it's got a, it's got a good weight to it. Yes, it's a lot of tobacco. We don't cigar. talk about how yep. heavy cigars are very often, but almost like it, it feels like it's wrapped in leather. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, let's give it a cut and light. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. So did Barry get that right? Does he, uh, the makeup of the cigar? Yes. Uh, the only thing I would add is there's actually two Nicaraguan fillers. So it's, um, it's Condega as well as um, uh, um, Ometepe. Ah, and I think the Condega is aged in barrels that were once used for scotch. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the Condega filler is, spends at least six months fermenting in a whiskey barrel. So now that Jonathan said leather, that's what I'm pulling out of this yeah, right off the leather, bat. leather, cold draw. Uh, while we had the Winston Churchill cigar dinner the other night, um, they did bring a little um, tasting uh, kit. kit. Really. And um, very interesting because one of the products that they, we had two different cigars, they lined it up with what we should expect on here. Leather is a primary component of this, yeah, I would say, I'm having note. right now, along with coffee and what is the other Hops. thing? Malt? malt? Yeah, malt. I'm sorry, malt. malt. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Renegade. The Vertigo Renegade features a flip top, four jets, flip out bullet punch, and the jets are fueled by the patented Vertigo big ass tank, all for the low price of $14.99. That's the Vertigo Renegade. This is the stocking stuffer of all stocking stuffers, folks. Uh, if If you know somebody, you give them one of these. And uh, they think you spent about fifty dollars on the lighter. It's fourteen ninety nine. You can throw in one of these cigars, and you got a party going on right there. Yes, you do. So, uh, Winter Churchill's birthday. Uh, we celebrated Thursday. We've been doing this for years and years. Uh, I think Winston Churchill is the most famous, most celebrated cigar smoker of all time. Trivia question number one to you is: What year was he born? Oh, trivia question number one <laughs> is going to be the one I fail on right out of the gate. Um, 1909, 1874, 1874. Wow. So close, Shia. It's, <laughs> a, it's all right. It's, the, it's, it's only, lifetime. It's the, yeah, it's the only trivia question I have for you anyway. So you can just <laughs> relax after that. I just happen to have the answer down. Uh, and I asked the audience, uh, that night too, and nobody got it right. So, uh, but 1874, um, all that time. Here it is, 2020, and we still talk about Winston Churchill in his cigar smoking. He is the ultimate cigar smoker. And what Davidoff did is uh, years ago, and I I ended up meeting his great-grandson, later his um, great-great-grandson, but in order to actually use the name Winston Churchill on the cigar, you have to have the okay from the Winston Churchill, whatever it is. Family foundation. Family foundation or something. The trust. Yes. Yeah. So Davidoff apparently went to them and said, okay, we want to actually put his face on it. We want to recognize this and put the name of there. Is that what happened? Uh, so it's interesting. Um, actually, they ended up coming to us. Oh. Um, but it, it's... It, <laughs> 
I should qualify that as, as, as that's that's quite a a, a nod. So um, Winston Churchill's grandson, Winston S. Churchill, got a phone call from the U.S. Patent Office in autumn of 2005, and somebody had filed a patent application in the office that wanted to make a cigar line with Winston Churchill's icon, his name, and his image. And Winston S. Churchill, the grandson, vetoed, uh, he appreciated the phone call, and but he vetoed it because it was something that if they were going to do, the family wanted to be involved in through every step of the process. It didn't want to be a, hey, is this okay with you? You know, so um, he said, thank you for the call. Um, I absolutely will not um, permit that. And, and I don't know whether or not there was any sort of communication about who had filed the application. Um, however, as, a, as the representative for the family and for the trust, he had a friend um, who I'm sure you will remember his, know his product. You may or may not know the name, but Sidney Frank is one of the people who was involved in the founding of Grey Goose Vodka. Um, so Winston S. Churchill contacted Sidney Frank and said, I now understand that there's um, an interest in making a, a cigar and, and a brand and a company after my grandfather's uh, legacy and his image. And it was Sidney Frank who actually said, well, if that's the case, and if it's something that you're considering, you need to contact uh, Odinger Davidoff. And that's actually how the ball started rolling. Oh, my. We, well, you, you said the perfect thing. Imagine getting the nod from that. I mean, holy God. Um, but was, wasn't, it, it wasn't it a little bit of a flop only because of when the release happened? I believe it was 2007. The, the market has essentially crashed. Here it is, an expensive cigar Winston, with Winston Churchill's name on it, but made by Davidoff, but it doesn't say Davidoff anywhere on the box, and someone's not popping off on a $30 cigar which is it, on a gimmick, essentially. Yeah, I mean, you, you got it pretty much absolutely right. It was, it was entirely uh, Winston Churchill branded. Uh, it definitely came to market in 2007. And, you know, we're, we're approaching 2008, 2009 and the tough times of that. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it, maybe it didn't translate so well to the market that it was a Davidoff paying homage to the Winston Churchill family and the estate. Um, fortunately, we've recovered really well from that, and it's it's definitely one of our our most accelerated, most um, performing lines, and really doing the family and the brand uh, the, the the homage it deserves now. Yeah, it's so yes. unbelievable. But how did you, definitely a, a struggle start? How did you get the family to sign off on it being Davidoff Winston Churchill, which is why it's selling now? I believe. So um, I think really it speaks to the the relationship from the very beginning. Um, and all the way through, which is, and, and rightfully so, you know, I mean, obviously they want to protect, um, as, as you have, have called it, and I would totally agree, the, the most famous cigar smoker, but, but obviously the man was so much more than that. Mm. Um, so I think it really, it was about building that trust. Um, the conversation started with Dr. Snyder, then they met in the Dominican Republic, and, and Hanky really put the, the tooth to it, you know, with the tobaccos. Um, and the entire concept, the cigar was always was designed to reflect the entire character and the personality of Winston Churchill. But I think it just took some time for the family and for the trust to understand that we were going to do it, the honor that it deserved. And we were going to pay the respect to the legacy, not only just in the tobaccos and the cigars and the formats that it's delivered, but the way it's packaged, you know, you know, everything about the way we look at this product is really about making sure to pay the proper respect to, to the man and the legend, you know? So I think, I think that's really how it came to be. They kind of did built, built the trust. They also understood that, you know, we are a brand that carries a certain amount of strength in the marketplace. And, you know, if, if we're going to have this relationship, it should be beneficial for all of us, but it also needs to be powerful and longstanding. And by adding Davidoff in partnership with Winston Churchill, you know, I mean, you're just bringing two, two giants together. You know, how could it not be success? Yeah. We are smoking the uh, Davidoff Winston Churchill late hour. There is a, um, I don't know call, what to call it, the regular line or the first line that came out of, of the Winston Churchill, which is a lighter version and the late hour, a heavier version of it. Um, am I right in saying that? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the original collection is what we call okay. the, the, the earlier line. Um, mostly the, the filler tobaccos in the original collection are Seiko versus Visus. Um, but also you don't have the barrel aging of the, the, um, Condega filler tobacco. 
Um, so it does still have some spice, but I would say the original collection is more of like a baking spice versus that oak and pepper spice that you get from the whiskey. Okay, I would say they sell they sell for us equally. They're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 there's the right person for for each one of these. Uh, very different in them. Um, you know, I tend to go to the lighter one myself, but enjoying this very much. Uh, that night we ended up um, smoking yeah, both we both of them, um, which was interesting. One after the other, and then really trying to decide which one. And, and, you know, just um, talking with the people in the audience, it went both ways that, you know, I like the first one better. I like the second one better, which is just fine. Yeah, it, it was it, a taste great, yeah. you know, less filling kind of uh, argument. Right. All night long. <laughs> so you have the brand Winston Churchill, but there's a lot of brands out there that have a size called Churchill. Is that an issue with the Churchill people, and I understand that they existed and nobody stopped it before that's there, but if I was to come out with a new brand tomorrow and try to call one of the sizes a Churchill, does that now become an issue? Uh, it, so it's a great question. Obviously, I can't speak for the family, um, but I think, you know, you mentioned it. So um, the the Petite Churchill and the, the Classic Churchill from Cuban production from way back when, which were obviously, um, you know, really thoroughly and regularly enjoyed by uh, Winston Churchill, uh, the original. Um, I would imagine that at this point in time, there's almost probably nothing that you can do based on the fact that, I mean, between Cuban and non-Cuban production, you're talking about probably tens of thousands of cigars that have Churchill associated with it as far as a, as far as a size. Um, again, I don't know. I can't speak for the family or for the trust. But I would imagine, just based on on precedent, that there's really nothing that they that they can do to challenge that. All right, I said I didn't have another trivia question for you, but I do uh, because it just came to mind. I, although I don't know the answer to it, the question is: What was the first cigar that actually um, put the name Churchill to it uh, of a size? And that was the idea for Winston Churchill that they called a double Corona a Churchill became the name of the size and i think stronger than ever the word churchill is now looked upon as a seven by 49 churchill uh size do you know what the first brand was seven by 47 in cuba okay seven by 47 uh yeah so i could be mistaken on this but i believe h upman was actually the first uh, brand i'm going romeo had. and juliet and i am saying ed sullivan is correct i looked it up it was in the 1950s it was the uh, Cuban cigar, Romeo and Juliet, uh, number two, which became the Churchill. All right. Well, he'll, don't, he'll, he'll don't double tap check me to your on trivia that. teams. No, that's it. That's <laughs> the last trivia question. I promise. Yeah, you keep uh, saying that. I know, but I, I, I just find it so interesting that here they have a brand called Winston Churchill and all their competitors, which may be a positive thing. That there's the competitors so, are advertising. For they're them. advertising for the true Winston Churchill, and also I made the argument that that night we're paying homage to Winston Churchill on his birthday. I think we have to smoke the Winston Churchill Churchill. But Jonathan was the Toro is the one. It's the best <laughs> one. We have to smoke the Toro. Um, what do you feel about that as far as the size goes on uh, Winston Churchill lines? Is there a favorite? Is there best sellers? Uh, so, yeah, so personal favorite actually for me is um, Churchill in, in both the original collection and the late hour. Um, as far as most popular, generally in, in, you know, in my experience on the retail side of the business and now with this company as well, Robustos and Toros pretty much lead the charge in the United States across the line for everything. And to Jonathan's credit, the Toro is definitely our most popular size in both the late hour and the original collection. Well, it goes, I think it speaks to value. Someone's going to pop off on a $20 ish cigar yeah. and you want to get something that looks like you're going to be smoking this for two hours. The Churchill looks a little on the thin side compared to other cigars in the shop. The Toro looks like a cigar compared to all the other cigars in the shop. You're going to spend your 20 bucks. I just, this is the direction you go. Almost 100% of the time, I go, when I smoke a Winston Churchill, I go to the Churchill because how can you not? <laughs> you know, it's Winston Churchill, and if he was to smoke one of these, he would be smoking the Churchill too. And I, I almost 100% go for that. I don't know. It's just, 
How don't do you, you feel like you're smoking a cigar do, right now? This is a serious cigar. A Churchill is. is a little dainty compared to this. This is a man's cigar. <laughs> because things have changed over the years. You've been around long long enough now in the industry. You, you know it's thicker, is is better, uh, is what happened in the industry. But, you know, as Ed was saying, a, a Churchill was a 47 ring gauge yeah. uh, back when the Churchill came yeah. out. Now, 50 seems to be the norm. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, it's not about length; it's about girth. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the uh, Davidoff has had a long history of having brand ambassadors. When they acquired Avo Uvesian Cigar Avo, they kept Avo on as a brand ambassador. Now we're seeing as Hanky Kellner is getting on in years, he is moving more into the role of brand ambassador type thing, where he he was traveling around COVID, notwithstanding. What is it that brings you to the table as far as a brand ambassador? Why why is Davidoff going with you sure uh well first off it's an honor um i will say my passion is definitely a, a huge part of it um i mentioned that i've been in the business for 10 years but i fell in love with cigars before i was 18 uh, my first cigar was when i was 15 um and i've always approached it with a certain level of romance but also a, a pretty significant amount of respect uh, i love the culture and i love the process uh and i started to build a relationship with davidoff from my time at Prime Cigar, which then became Casa de Monte Cristo by Prime Cigar. Uh, and when I got to visit the factory on Viaje, on the trip to the Dominican Republic, uh, it really gave me a, a personal, a better understanding of the differences, um, the way that Davidoff uh, operates and the way that the, the Swiss operation, the U.S. force and the Dominican and the Honduran production facilities all work together with this kind of over-encompassing um, unrelenting pursuit of quality. Uh, and, and that's really what, what impressed me or impressed upon myself when I was on that trip in the Dominican Republic. Uh, I also have to say that, um, Eddie, Eddie Guerra, um, the senior brand manager for, uh, Davidoff, he and I have been friends for quite some time. And, um, I had had several conversations with Eddie through his time in the industry. Uh, and we started to, to kind of build a, a, a symmetry, and when things happened um, this year with the changes, um, also, uh, Klaus Peter, who I know you all know, mm. uh, he just had a baby. Uh, as a, By the way, congratulations, Klaus. The baby was born uh, three days ago. Oh, so, boy, wow. congratulations. Boy or girl? Uh, girl. Okay. And uh, he, he just posted the, the picture. She's absolutely beautiful, um, as, as we would all expect with right. the two of them. Right. Uh, but, so, but so he ended up going back to the Dominican Republic full time along with his father. Uh, and, and Jeff Stone, uh, also another one of our brand ambassadors, um, you know, so that they, they definitely needed two of us in the States. So there was a lot of opportunity there. Um, There's certainly some luck involved in it. Uh, but I am absolutely committed to this business, uh, have been since I first started. And, and I think, uh, I'm just fortunate and, and really grateful to be a part of this amazing company. Yeah, it, it's a great business. Klaus Peter having a baby. I remember when he was a baby. That's how far back I go with them. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and when I saw him at the trade show two years ago, yeah, we're going to get married. And they got married uh, right there at, at the trade show. Uh, boy, talk about somebody that has uh, tobacco in his blood. I mean, the, the business in his blood. Uh, it's wonderful to see this young man. Uh, and he's going to be a big deal for Davidoff going forward. So, uh Great, great. And you're stepping into kind of his shoes because he was doing what you're doing now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I had an opportunity to work with him for several weeks. Um, and I've known him for a couple of years, but I had an opportunity to work with him directly for almost a month before he moved back to the Dominican Republic. Uh, and and Klaus uh, was able to, like you said, I mean, I, I, I said he's kind of like one of the plants in the fields of Davidoff. He was basically born and raised in this company. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so we still speak and being able to absorb his knowledge and his experience and, and the willingness that he was, he had to share it was, was really special. Yeah. Some tough shoes to fill. Uh, but I no think doubt. you got it. I, I, I can see your passion in it. So I'm excited to, to get to know you and, uh, the, the shop that you worked at, I know, uh, won awards for Davidoff. Uh, you with the helm of, of it uh, working there and making it. So uh, they saw in you that you had that passion for Davidoff, selling more than anybody around, uh, winning the awards.
boards and stuff. So uh, uh, it, it looks like a, uh, a good match right now that uh, you're happy and they should be happy too. So that's fantastic. Uh, well, so going you. forward, I see, um, you know, besides uh, the year of the ox that was planned and the different things that ended up coming up, there, there must have been other projects that were pushed back, COVID-19, things that held off. So you must know of what's coming in the future. So what can you what can you tell us and our listeners? Sure. Um, so first off, you're 100% right. There's a couple things that were slated for this year um, that have been you know, um, moved just to next year. Um, most of them, of course, and unfortunately, I cannot yet speak about. Um, but we're not going to focus on that. I'll tell you what I can talk about. Um, we have um, the next iteration is actually perfect for, for this episode. Um, so early next year, we'll be releasing the newest of the limited editions for the Winston Churchill line. Um, that's going to be something that's really special. It kind of continues to speak to the diverse character and the personality traits of, of Winston Churchill. Uh, it's a, it's a kind of perfectly fits in between these two cigars, um, but, but at a, at a, at a little twist, a nice, nice uh, tweaked level. Um, we're approaching our annual sales meeting. Uh, we're two weeks away from that, um, in which we're, we're really positioning and we're really focusing on, um, paying homage and really, really emphasizing our roots and the tradition and the philosophy that has driven this company to where it is and, and to where we are today. Um, but also, um, you know, Zeno Davidoff has been an innovator. It was an innovator throughout the entire time. We're also playing that innovation into the future, um, for the company. Um, as well, um, I know, and, and forgive me if I'm jumping ahead, but um, I know you have the, the Avo Classic Maduro. Um, so, so we're, we're, you know, we brought that back into regular production um, after the success of the 30th anniversary re-release. Um, so all three of the lines, the Camacho Nicaragua, all three of the lines, you know, in, in true Davidoff form, we are bringing um, new, but new things with a purpose. You know what I mean? It's not doing a new product just to put a new product in the marketplace. All of these things have a lot of years of planning and effort and energy behind them. Um, and, and we have some exciting stuff coming for you in, in, in the first and the second quarter of next year. All right. We look forward to that. Uh, you mentioned Avo uh, Maduro. I'm telling you, I'm, uh, I've been chain smoking those things. Uh, fantastic cigar. Yeah, uh, I'm not big, a um, big Maduro guy, but a contender for the cigar of the year. Uh, and, and right up there, a great cigar. And, um, um, you know, actually excelling Avo uh, this year dramatically. Have you seen increases across the board at Davidoff with sales? Yes. Yeah, actually, um, it's fortunate. We're fortunate. This year has has been, you know, a challenge in a lot of different ways. But um, we are up. We have had a, a very, very strong year. Uh, a lot of growth actually for us this year. And to your point, a lot of that has been in the the growth and the stability of Avo and Camacho, as well as you know, obviously the the constant growth of Davidoff. Yeah, what a what a wacky year. If 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 you had talked to me in uh, early May. Um, things were doom and gloom, and I was ready to jump off the building. But uh, boy, everything came on so strong, and um, you know, it seems like quality. You know, people are going to quality, which was always the the first and foremost thing with the whole Davidoff portfolio of um, you know, smoke less but smoke better. Uh, and I see that 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 is happening of people actually stepping it up and saying no more of those bundles and cheap cigars and things like that, that if I'm going to smoke a cigar, let me let it be something good. And, um, you know, th that is the uh, basically portfolio of the whole Davidoff uh, brand that, that's happening there. And and uh, way off, we were probably at the beginning of May, we were probably way off. And we not only are having the best year ever uh, as brick and mortar retailers, but we're seeing that the quality of the product right. we're seeing, we just went over numbers this morning yeah. of seeing what it is, the better products are actually shining as opposed to... Well, also, it speaks to companies like Davidoff. It's not like you guys are out of stock on stuff. I mean, you, you certainly have done your due diligence of building up your inventory reserves and the shit hits the fan across the country and who can perform... It, it's the top three percent that's not on back order, and that's you guys. 
Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And by the way, I love the show that you did about the, the preparing for the, the coming shortages of tobacco and the, and the strategy that was, that was exceptional. That was, uh, it was, I really thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. Well, who, who knew it? I got a lot of phone calls at, when the whole thing started and saying, what's the move here? And I go, well, I'm just like you, some of the stuff I can go back historically and say, well, this is what happened before. But when it came to COVID-19, I said, this is brand new, but, Uncharted. but I think this changes everything going forward. Whatever we learned as this went on, uh, going forward, we take this important time in life and say, okay, we get prepared for if, and hopefully it never happens again, but um, the things that end up working out and why it ended up happening uh, is going to be an important thing going forward. So we should, we learn from this. Uh, what are we learning from the Davidoff Winston Churchill late hour as far as taste, flavors? Uh, what, sh- what should we be expecting of the taste and flavors of this. Sure. Uh, well, the, the, we started the show and you definitely hit it. Leather is kind of a prominent flavor profile through this, uh, especially with that barrel aging process. Uh, you're going to get spice. Um, I would say that the spice is kind of underlying. Uh, it's a, a front of mouth kind of, uh, early spice stimulation. Um, def- definitely, definitely a creaminess. Uh, I think more so in the original collection, but it still exists very true to form in the late hour. Um, something that surprises me when I, when I enjoy this cigar is the cream is actually for me prominent and highlighted in the final third, which is usually for me when it kind of vanishes from a lot of blends. Uh, and then you get that coffee and cocoa, um, kind of back of mouth, real depth and layered on. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the wood, the, the cedar and the oak wood from the barrel aging, but also from the tobacco, uh, especially that Nicaraguan tobacco. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. How would you say I did? Nice yeah, on what you're you, tasting. You nailed it. Yeah. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. And, and burning well. And, it, boy, it feels good. It's it's a beefy, it's a long great smoke. cigar. And we're 30 minutes into the show and, and barely smoked right. it. Probably get two hours out of, out of a Toro. So it won't go to waste. I promise we'll end up smoking the Avo in the next hour, but I'll put this aside and finish it later on because it's that good. And if you've never tried a Davidoff late hour, Winston Churchill late hour, you need to try this. This is a, a heavier blend than most Davidoffs. Not, you know, without looking at the band, you probably wouldn't guess Davidoff. You would on the, on the quality of, sure. of the cigar, but it, it's more of a Nicaraguan cigar than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it's medium plus and you know, if the original Winston Churchill was too mild for you and you've shied away from trying the uh, late hour, you're doing yourself a disservice. You should definitely give the late hour a try. There we go. Shia Goldberg, it's great talking to you. Uh, I wish you all the luck in the future. I can't wait to, to meet you face to face. I, if you said we met before, there was a whole bunch of people in that place uh, at Super Bowl week um, where we met. But uh, I'd love to get uh, sitting down talking to you, and uh, I hope that happens soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, and, and I'll, I'll make sure of that. You're, you're def- I'm definitely coming to see you guys. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we pitched Steve Sacker on a commercial for Meet Corita, and he has not quite bit yet. Uh, we were getting close, but currently no cigar. Um, time is running out because we are looking for one more sponsor by the end of the year uh, for next year. So Mr. Jonathan and I thought we'd pitch someone else. Oh, boy. Uh, it turned out to be a competition like everything we do, um, and uh, both of us have an idea based on the emails from our listeners, and um, this may be a brand that's even hotter. So let's see what we got when we come back. That and lots more. Stick around. We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light, for there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. 
Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua, the Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by AJ Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause lung cancer and heart disease. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lining up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, Those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10-count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth-generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hello and good afternoon. It's Randolph Churchill here. My great-grandfather would have loved the Cigar Authority's show. 
Makes me smile every time because that's the magic of Ed Sullivan over there. We're back. We're smoking the Winston Churchill late hour and celebrating Winston Churchill's 146th birthday. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. Great cigar. Great cigar. It's expensive. $20 cigar, but... It's easy to get lost in this cigar, and I feel like I've done that multiple times during the show. It's, we could it, tell. <laughs> it's, it's flavorful. It's smooth. It's balanced. It's a great aroma. There's nothing negative about Although, this cigar. I will say uh, it, it has all the flavor and taste of a $20 cigar, yeah, absolutely. right? absolutely. Some of them you, you spend the money and think, ah, I could have got something for 10 bucks, but this is worth it. There's a lot of, lot of flavor going on. Hear here. me out on this. Okay, don't poo-poo it right away. All right. If you make black coffee using semolina durum wheat pasta water, and then at the end you add- I did the pasta water last week, and you they add laughed at me. Just, just a hint of, it's almost minty. There's a minty component going on uh, in here. I don't here. get any mint. No. You tasted yeah. some smoke, you fucking asshole. And I don't Bill think, you I don't think dirty water is enticing it's at all. It's not dirty. No, it's pasta water, which it, and it's, <clears> it's got to be the Durham semolina. It's got a little more sweetness to it. It's a thicker, chewier component added to that coffee. Thick and chewy. I get that in, on this cigar. And pasta water is not a dirty thing. I mean, sometimes the sauce you make to go with the pasta, you, you add, add, you add, add that. You need yeah. to because you need the flavor. You yeah. need add the thickness. It's important. It's good. Uh, please subscribe to the Cigar Authority on a podcast, please. <laughs> I'd like to buy a B. <laughs> <laughs> Can I buy a consonant, please? <laughs> what? Please. What did I say? Subscribe. Subscribe. Thank hey, you. Good. <laughs> All right. It's, I mean, it's written correctly in the show notes. Oh, All you got to do is read it. You can't read it. <laughs> and, and by the way, Dave, great job. I think you had the guest's name correct every time. Because I put it. That's because he has the pronunciation key on the show notes. <laughs> and it still doesn't help me sometimes because I have it written. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, please subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> We've just added a B to the end. It's okay. <laughs> the B is in there. It's yeah. not in the exact same. It doesn't spot. matter where. To the podcast, I say this because December 18th is coming, and I think the shit's going to hit the fan on December 18th. Facebook is saying that if we have advertising content within the show, it's going to be removed. We may lose everything. All the stuff may go down. You saw it happen to me before yeah. on a personal level. It's about to happen to everything. So I love you watching. The people that do watch, the major fast majority do listen. But the people that are watching, it may go away. But it'll be on YouTube for now. For now. <laughs> but this, this becomes the beginning of what ends up happening. So the first thing is taking me down personally. Then it's going to take down the business personal, which I take personally. And uh, where does it go? So we find that the safest place for our content to be, because we own the content that is provided, is via a podcast. So you don't have a podcast. You just... Download any podcast catcher. Mm -hmm. Does you know you don't have an iPhone? It and doesn't matter. It can be any podcast. It's, it's easy enough now to write on the desktop with Google Podcast. Yeah. If you search for the Cigar Authority podcast, it'll pop right up. You can listen on your computer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so do that uh, because it's gonna all of a sudden it's gonna happen, and then I'm not able to speak to you. So it's going to be December 19th, and I'm going to be trying to talk to you, and I can't talk to you and tell you what to do, so I'm telling you what to do now. It's important. Uh, find us also on MeWe, because- yeah. uh, That's where the real party is. That's the party is there anyway. Barry is starting to become a believer. Yeah, I like the, the chat room feature <laughs> on there is awesome. Hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of like Facebook Messenger, but everybody that's part of the community is involved in it. Yeah. So you got a little downtime or between phone calls- my favorite Ed, is usually a conversation going on, and it's a fun time. My favorite part about the the MeWe is it gives you the option of being able to start where you left off. So you click the little button at the top, and it brings you to the last message you read. Yes, and it shows you the line. So now you know you're dealing with just new information. It's yeah. great. Facebook ain't liking tobacco, and we're there. We're there until they throw us off because there's a lot of people there. We want to be there, but they don't want us to be there. So we've been getting ready. And I, all our other podcast friends out there that have other podcasts, uh, other cigar podcasts and stuff, 
I recommend you do the same because all of a sudden it's going to happen. I'm a strong believer in insurance policies. This becomes the insurance policy. So we, we're getting ready Dave, for it. We, we still have to have a strategy discussion for putting all of our video somewhere. Yeah. Right? Because who knows? Well, we, we give it to the MeWees. We can't. So MeWe, the problem with MeWe is we can only put 30 seconds or something mm -hmm. like that. 30 on seconds there. live, but you can put a longer video up. No, you cannot. Uh, there's a cap on the, uh, the size of the video yeah. and the amount of stuff you could have on your page. For all you free people, I'd yeah. pay. There's a cap. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to figure it out, though. Yeah, but it's time's coming, right? Time's coming. Today's December 5th. December 18th is around the corner. It's two weeks away. So um, I'm urging you to do that, please. Uh, that being said, and, and if you do that, I'll stop singing songs. No, right you won't. Now. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> um, giggles like a little schoolgirl <laughs> all week, <laughs> aggravating wow. the shit out of all of us, and singing his stupid songs. Dave, I want to figure this. Uh, did, did you actually mix these yourself, too? Yeah. It's, listen, these are all raw things. Once we find the thing, we give it to a pro like you and no, say, but, okay, but you, fi you figured out Audacity and you mixed it. I these? did the best I could do, but obviously it's not my, my forte. Um, listen, I'm not going to criticize. I like the initiative. So the idea is these jingles. Stop calling it I, that. I remember stuff in the 60s to this oh, yeah. day that I can still recite a commercial. So it's good to have a little stupid thing like that. Like um, Jose Dominguez, yep. that you don't forget Jose Dominguez because uh, of the little uh, stupid thing that me and you did. That's the first one we did as a goof thing, and it stuck around all this time. It's I'll, been around a long time. He uh, loved it and, yeah. and paid for it. That's how that stuck around. I'll, I'll never forget plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, oh what, what a relief, what a relief it, is. it is. alka yeah. That was written by a professional. I would hardly call what people are about to listen to stuff that was written by a professional. It's pr pretty darn good. The point is that it, it that sticks around. So soccer ain't haven't, hasn't bit yet. He's kicking the can down the street. He's advertising with other people, not doing us because we're too expensive. Blah, 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 blah. I had to listen to all this shit. So we, we, we can't sit around and wait. The end of the year is coming. we got to fill this spot. I, I think you offered him a cheaper alternative with the ash holes mm. and still nothing. And he was on their show. I, I was there. I remember that. It was that. a good show. It, it was, was a good show. Yeah, it was yeah. good. And he liked it. So maybe he goes there if I fill it up. And then he that's his only option if right. that ends up going. So we were saying we need a hot brand. And me and Jonathan talk back and forth. If, if we don't go with, with soccer, if he doesn't jump on board where do we go and uh we said you know what are hot brands and we came up with a hot brand i thought we came up with it so me and jonathan are talking back and forth and he says well i want to go in this direction i'd say i, I want to go in that direction so i said you make one and i'll make one and let's hear what they what they are. So we get tortured not once, but twice. As it turns out. Well, you're only going to get tortured once. I think mine's gonna pretty get, good. <laughs> you're actually going to get tortured three times right. because wouldn't you know it. <laughs> a listener had the same brand. On, our, on, on the speed pipe, right? Uh, the stink pipe. <laughs> stink pipe. Yeah, the speed bag. <laughs> so he did it too. So let's hear Mr. Jonathan's first. All right. Brace yourself, everybody. Have you ever put a lighter to a hot cake? It's so friggin' good. But the hot cake we're talking all about are hot cakes from HVC. Hot cakes are the name of a cigar from HVC. HVC hot cakes are so friggin' good. HVC hot cakes are premium cigars out of Nicaragua featuring a Mexican San Andreas Maduro wrapper, Nicaraguan Corojo 99 binder grown in Jalapa, and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, including a leaf of Corojo 2006 Maduro, which makes this blend pop. Expect rich notes of dark chocolate, espresso, and spice. It's so friggin' good. Have you ever put a lighter to a hot cake? HVC hot cakes. So friggin' good. Now, Dave, did you sabotage the mix on that one, or he just was so misaligned? He did, he did it with no... Yeah, I know music. And, and, I, that was and I just in threw after. in what I was doing because I had something myself. Right. But, uh, as it turns out, and I didn't hear this until this morning, that somebody actually came up with something yeah, themselves. Yeah. Scott, right? Scott Peters. I kept waiting for Israel to start singing uh, Somewhere <laughs> Over the Rainbow with the ukulele in the background. Well, let's hear from Scott Peters. Let's do it. 
Have you ever put butter on a hot cake? It's so friggin' good. Have you ever tasted smoky fucking asshole? If you haven't, then I think you should. <laughs> That's a winner. <laughs> it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. He's putting butter on a hot cake. Yeah. Yeah. He's not what, putting a light. Do. Yes, but it has nothing to do with the cigar. <laughs> And and I don't think you have to bring you fucking asshole. Into it. <laughs> See, I disagree completely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, would buy that. You need well, you need an edgy brand to bring in you fucking asshole. Yeah, this has to go to uh, this whole little segment has to go to Rene Lorenzo, <laughs> who's hot HVAC hotcakes uh-huh. or just HVC hotcakes. He's HVC. not in the uh, heating oh, and air conditioning okay. business. <laughs> Uh, Dave, Mar- Mark Little in the chat room says it's time to take out his hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have hearing Sorry, aids, Mark. but I have to listen to it, too. But th- what happens during the downtime at the cigar store? This is actually <laughs> what happens at our store of what happens. So we goof and around. The real bad news is that it's slower in the winter, so who knows? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Do we have to keep doing this? No. This is over at the b- first of the well, year. We get the spot taken. You want to stop this, you make somebody buy the spot. And it's over. Yeah, make sure you share it. Yeah. Get it to Lorenzo. Rainier. Rainier Lorenzo, yeah. Yeah. Get it to him. Uh, He's out there on the YouTubes or whatever. Oh, he's on the social medias. I see him there. And he smokes a lot of the hot cakes. You guys are stalling. Hot cakes. Hot cakes. You're stalling. Well, I think this is the best one. Are you ready for the best one? Here we go. This has my vote. Okay. Smoking cigars, hotcakes. Anybody here want to smoke hotcakes? HVC hotcakes. Hotcakes. I get them from the cigar shop, man. Legito number four, Corona Gorda or five. HVC hotcakes satisfies smoking hotcakes. Hotcakes. You get them from the cigar shop, man. Legito number four, Corona Gorda or five. HVC hotcakes satisfies. Smoking hotcakes. Hotcakes. You get them from the cigar shop, man. Stop shaking your head. I was, no just, I was tempted to just walk off the set. Yeah. <laughs> it's no. so bad. I want to drop the mic and walk out with my hands up. It's so bad that it, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> now, how many takes? Were you saying HVAC hotcakes at all? Or no, no, no. I, no, I, I you're got off down that one. now. Yeah. Chat room said days was pretty painful. Yeah. <laughs> But you could get that shit but, stuck in your head because it's been in my head all week. Now you get that, and you give that to a real person to record it, <laughs> and you get it. And this came from a listener of these words that he gave to us, and li- little massage and those um, Legito number four, Corona Gorda, or five of the three sizes. Yeah, we of got the that. Cakes. We we got that. Well, in case you didn't uh. get it. Dave, Alan King says, no wonder no one wants to buy a spot. <laughs> Beer and Beards is uh, he's a death metal musician, and he wants to know if he should create a jingle. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Hell yes. Absolutely. You can, take, you can actually, so some thoughts as you take that commercial, it airs the way it does, and then it becomes a metal version of it, then it becomes mm. a disco version of it. And, we'll get Gilberto to make a hip-hop version. Hip-hop version. Yeah, you got a rapper out there that would, would kill on this, right? And then we switch them up every once in a while. Ed Sullivan's not buying I it. I mean, so, some of the chat room is yes. a- asking me to play screeching cats instead of this. <laughs> and Sean Eckhart says it almost sounds like you don't want them to do a hotcake commercial with those. Yeah, I don't really care, <laughs> to be honest with you. It, it You're matter. having fun. Yeah, that's, the, that's what the whole thing comes down to. We're smoking cigars. We're having fun. And that's what cigar smoking is all we got about. The, uh, speaking of hotcakes, that's one of the brands that is in the contenders pack as well as yes. Avo Maduro, which I believe we're doing both brands uh, some extra credit here, which is unfair to the rest of the contenders. We didn't know. We're talking about these were These were chosen a long time ago, right. and they, they were put in mm-hmm. there, so yeah. This isn't your way of trying to sneak, because you pulled this shit with uh, no. La Galera <laughs> Habano. We smoked that like eight times while it was a contender. And it didn't win. It didn't win, but you still tried. Uh, Mo- I'm still a fan of that. Mo- Moses in the chat room sums it up very nicely with just WTF. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. It is fair. It, as crazy as it is, it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. 
Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum Cigars. (laughs) (laughs) And the cancel society strikes again. This past week, Dallas Cowboy head coach Mike McCarthy used a watermelon and a sledgehammer to show his defense how he wanted them to strip the ball from running back Dalvin Cook. The comedic move was blasted by former NFLer Shannon Sharp, who stated the use of a watermelon was racist toward the black community. Oh, God. Job wanted, former comedian with sledgehammer, now available for demolition jobs, please contact Gallagher. And that's not only <laughs> insane, it's asylum. I was just going to ask yeah. you, who was that comedian? Is Gallagher? Whatever happened to him? It was that, a Gallagher, too, also. That was yeah, his, his brother, brother, I think. Yeah. It did the same thing. Yeah, smash a watermelon. Guy had years and years of success with that. Sledgeomatic. <laughs> is he around? Did he die? No, let me see what Gallagher's up. To. What's Gallagher doing? And he looked uh, a lot like Doug Henning, the magician. If you remember, the he movie. died too. Yep. Well, I don't know if Gallagher. Yeah, you're died. killing people yeah. off left and right over here. But uh, Gallagher hasn't died because I haven't done it too soon, and there's a few that could be done for him. Yeah. So. Yeah, and. Gallagher, for all his success, his net worth comes up as two hundred thousand dollars. He was very popular there for a while, but he's still around. Yeah, he was a one-trick pony, though. No, he used to have... Sledgehammer was the only thing you remember. No, he had a whole bit about D-O-Do and S-O-So and wordplay. And he he had a a trunk of different things that he'd make all kinds of... You're thinking of of Carrot Top, but... Oh, Carrot Top. Mm -hmm. He was like a Carrot Top, (laughs) but without red hair and muscles. Yeah. Gallagher is 74 years young. Ah, that's why. He probably can't... Lift the sledge. sledge anymore, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and and his brother went at him like a competitor to him, and yeah. So that wasn't nice either. So there was a lot going on. By the way, last week and this week, I don't know if you noticed it, but there's uh, an American flag behind us, and uh, yes, Robert from Flags the Flag Store was nice enough to send it to us, and uh, you can find him on the internet, for, and he has flags of all types at the flag store, and they're based in Meridian, Connecticut. Yeah, the flag store. Beautiful I feel, flag. I feel very presidential up here yes. with it behind me. It's nice, uh, and, it, and it's supposed to go in my office, um, but it's so tall. Mm. The ceiling isn't. We're yeah. in a studio where it fits in the studio with the cathedral ceiling, but there's not much I can cut. The, you can't let it touch the ground. You've nope. got to be careful here of this, but it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it is. Very patriotic. We're going to do Dave, something major with that. Are we going to get to uh, Mr. Jonathan's Christmas card? Because the chat room is saying it was uh, freaking weird. Yeah, and, and, and apologies. Like, a lot of people haven't gotten the care package yet. 95% of them are scheduled to be delivered on Monday. Post office right now is seeing seven to 10 day delays. We're going to get and into that in the after show. Yeah, it's not so, just here in New Hampshire. So let, it's, let's hold off on the postcard talk till next week, maybe, so everyone has a chance to get in on that. All right. Yeah, um, I, I got some stuff to say but, about that. But people are unhappy because they're not getting it. Uh, it's certainly not Barry's fault, although we'll blame him anyway. Mm-hmm. But um, shipping of all things, is, everything's slowed down, everything's going to get tougher. Um, In the middle of the Christmas season yeah, right now. All the more, support yeah. your brick-and-mortar retailers, support your brick-and-mortar retailers. UPS has shut off Nike and Macy's, and uh, they're not accepting any more packages from some of the bigger companies right now because they can't handle it. And, and during the pandemic was going on, the big box sales were taken care of, and the little guy wasn't. Mm-hmm. How about during the Christmas season, we take care of the little guys right. mm-hmm. and help them out? How about that? Uh, next week on the show, uh, train a cigar smoker like a dog. Um, Scott Williams, podcaster here with the Quirky Dog Podcast. We're going to have him on as a guest. We're not going to smoke a dog rocket, are we? No, we'll <laughs> smoke nice cigars. Okay. Um, actually, we talked about the Camacho Nicaraguan in, mm. in the last half hour. Um, that's what we're going to smoke. We'll bring that in. Also, in the second hour, Rafael Nadell from Aging Room is going to come on, and we're going to smoke an Aging Room with him and see what's going on. Um, well, we're going to smoke a Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. Maybe. Um, we'll figure that out anyway. But um, good news is December 19th for Barry, uh, alcohol and cigars. Do they oh, really? mix? And hell yeah, says Barry. Um, we're going to uh, smoke a Kalanok 50 
which is loaded with peat, um, and probably have some booze along with it. Can you have scotch? I could have scotch, I could have bourbon, and I could have Florida Cognac rum. <laughs> really? Yeah, there's no sugar added after the distilling process, so it has like one gram of carbs. Barry's 60-something. 63. 63 pounds down. Mm-hmm. And we're watching the shrinking of Barry uh, in 2020, and 2021's <laughs> going to be even better, right? Uh, 100%. I'm hoping to get to 100 by my birthday, which is March 4th. Uh, I think I'll hit it before then, but that's the goal I've set my for myself. Oh, God. If you do 100 pounds, my God, I'll buy you a pizza. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Keto pizza. Sarah from the Ashholes brought in a, a cake that uh, her parents had sent her to celebrate it here in uh, the Salem location. And she brought in a cake, but she was nice enough to bring in a keto snack for me. So I, I wouldn't be left out. So. I saw that. Uh, December 26th, Cigar of the Year. If you have the contenders packs, um, they're running out anyway. Buy them if get you want to get in. But if you did buy it, get your votes in because December 26th uh, is it. We're going to yeah, announce the winner. I think we winner. said December 22nd uh, was the cutoff date. Yeah, because I, I need to order trophies and, and mm-hmm. wrap it up and all that stuff. So, uh uh, get that in, and um, we're already planning 2021 uh, on our schedule, so uh, things are good. Things Smoking are good. cigars. Hot cakes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, final thoughts here, and final thought. the first final thought I'll say is I'm about halfway done. Me too. I don't want to put it down. I mean, so, the next so, cigar is great too, but I kind of don't want to put this can, down. We can smoke it through the break. Um, but what do you think? It's great. He was okay. right about where I'm, I'm cr- cresting into the final third here, and there's a creamy component that's starting, uh, a little more sweetness coming about. Mm-hmm. So I think we've gotten through the majority of the tips of that Omotepi tobacco, which tends to be on the earthy side, mm-hmm. and we're getting into the sweeter stuff. Was it Condega? Condega. Yeah, they're kind of known for a little, a little more sweetness. Davidoff does it right in respects that it's a full-bodied cigar, but it's Davidoff full body. It's refined. It, very, very. All the sharp edges are off of it. It is smooth, and it is lots of flavor, as full flavor as you can get. But it's it doesn't make me sick. It's not too heavy. If if you want to start getting into heavier cigars, try a Davidoff Winston Churchill late hour. And see what I mean, that you're going to have no problem smoking this full body mm-hmm. cigar. Because it's so refined. Very balanced. Very aged, very balanced, very great. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we have an Avo Fender guitar to give away. Um, We're going to give it away next week, but we're going to tell you how you can get in on the chance to get it. Uh, It's for Cigar Authority listeners only, so it's not for people in our shops or anything like that. Your odds are very, very good. So uh, we'll tell you that when we come back. Actually, we have great prizes to give away all December long. Every single week is going to be a different prize for Cigar Authority listeners only, uh, just like we do with the mailbag, but these are extraordinary uh, prizes to give away. So we're going to tell you about that when we return. We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, the time, my friend, is now. For just $24.99, you'll get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke each one of those cigars on the Cigar Authority Podcast with you. I don't know if that's really a benefit. Sure it is. We will judge the construction, flavors, and review the cigars, and you can see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for $24.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on thecigarauthority.com and sign up today. The Cigar Authority Care Package. Agent Room 4, Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, Every puff is an overture of flavors 
that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room Cuatro Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning cigar smoking can cause cancers of the mouth and throat even if you do not inhale. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's Cigar Journal. Com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th Anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at better cigar shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop-to-shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is a Hank Kellner and my son. Plus Peter Kellner and you're listening to The Cigar Authority. And we are back. Happy December. We're giving away gifts, not uh, 
just to people who email us, but we're ramping it up, taking it to another level each week during the month of December. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And we're smoking a cigar from the Cigar Authority Care Package. And it is also a contender for the Cigar of the Year. Barry, what do we have? Well, today's second cigar is the Avo Classic Maduro, which is manufactured in the Dominican Republic by Davidoff. The size that we're lighting up is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package and the Contenders Pack that measures 5 by 50. It features an American broadleaf wrapper, Dominican binder, and fillers. Single cigar will set you back $9.99, while a box of 25 is $2.20.99, which makes it just $8.84 a cigar. It's a savings of almost $29 or 12% off the box price on TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, Try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. An American I was just, broadleaf. You, you read my mind. Yeah, I'm, an American broadleaf. Very interesting what's going on with broadleaf. So we have Connecticut broadleaf. You can't even buy it. There's none around. Right. Then you have Pennsylvania broadleaf, which is typically ugly. It tastes good, but it doesn't look, look so good. Then you have E.P. Carrillo put out... <laughs> Uh, Massachusetts broadleaf. Right, still on the Connecticut River, yeah. but it's grown just over the water. It's, it's Connecticut broadleaf. Yeah. And then we have United States broadleaf here. Which is probably Massachusetts broadleaf, but it they could be. didn't want to say that. So it, it reminds me of Mexican tobacco, right? That yeah. San Andreas. And what other kind of Mexican tobacco is there besides San Andreas? None. If mm-hmm. you... If so you, they, they've changed the name of it, and you may see Broadleaf change its name. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, because you can see something's going on. They've, they've talked to each other. If you were to look at the cigar just by itself, <clears throat> take the band off of it, you would assume it's sun-grown. It's, it's on the lighter spectrum, color-wise, for it, a Maduro. It, it, you look at it, you wouldn't say it is Connecticut Broadleaf looking no, at it. No, it doesn't seem to have the, the thickness either of right. the Connecticut Broadleaf. It is toothy. It's it has a toothy component to it, yeah. But it seems too nice, and they would choose the best of the best anyway, if they, you know, knowing Davidoff how they are. But if you if you look at Pennsylvania, it just doesn't look like this either. Nah, it's very <clears throat> it's very shriveled up like a old lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it's not even colored, Pennsylvania. It's no, not as even. Nah, colored. it's brindled. Yeah. So there's a little, little um, brindle to this. Yeah, a little bit, but again, they'll, they'll pick the top quality of it. The Avo Maduro. Um, do not smoke the Avo Maduro. You didn't buy the Contenders Pack and say this cigar is great because you are going to say it's great, and say okay, I'm going to vote for this because you didn't smoke the other six, so it's unfair. Right. That's why we we you know it's demanding that you end up smoking the seven cigars. But anyway, with that said, let's give it a cut and light. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Okay, I've, I've been smoking this so often. I'm good for at least 10 a week. Mm-hmm. All right. A little raisin, could, but go if on. If you could deconstruct, you know that you get the peanuts in the shell? Yeah. Unsalted, but they're roasted. If you could, you got to have a three banger. It's yeah. a technical mm-hmm. term. You cut holes in the ends. You get the peanuts out, but you leave the skins in, and you take a pull through that peanut shell. That's the cold drop. Peanut shell dust. <laughs> the dust from a peanut shell. Why do you got to oversimplify it? Like if if you were to um, snort the dust left in the bag of peanut shells. Well, I believe Nick Kutro wanted you to simplify things. Yeah, he wasn't a big fan of the uh, no the Getting big deep long into- elaborate. No, just break it down to the components. Yeah, we're going to break it down to the lighter that we're going to use today, which is the Vertigo Renegade. The Vertigo Renegade features a flip top, four jets fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. At the bottom, you have a flip-out bullet punch, an easy adjustment, all for the low price of $14.99. This is the stocking stuffer of stocking stuffers. Ask for it by name, Vertigo Renegade. The Renegade. $14.99. So we did do the pro palette testing 
uh, on Sunday with the entire staff of two guys. Almost everybody showed up. Which was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And um, very interesting. I learned so much. Uh, I read the book uh, short of one chapter that's a surprise for me, and I promised Nick that I would get to it. I still haven't got to it. Hopefully tomorrow uh, I can I can wrap it up. You know what my favorite part of that whole event was? At the end when we were all saying what the cigars were, Jonathan was saying what they were, and you called them out. Of course he knows what they are. He picked the fucking cigars Right, right, out. right. He put you in your place. So we smoked three cigars blind, and we went through this whole palate thing of smelling all these different things and tasting it. We actually tested our taste. How did you make out, by the way? Uh, so I had the ultra-sensitive palate. You did? Yep. And uh, when we sniffed the uh, things, I-, I would say 90%, and there were like two that I didn't get. And the two I didn't get was leather and cedar. And the reason why I didn't get leather and cedar, and I should have got them all, but why didn't I get those two, is because we were at Two Guys Smoke Shop, where we were surrounded with leather and cedar. And he said, yeah, you can't even smell it. It's like all, I used to go into Two Guys Smoke Shop when I first opened the store and I could smell mm-hmm. cigars. I don't <laughs> smell it anymore because I'm just surrounded by it so often and it, and it takes it away. He says, now, when you get the Pro Palette kit, he said, in your... At home, smell, you're going you're gonna to get the cedar and you're going to get the um, leather, no problem. He says, being in here, it's tough. I, w- I would have guessed, I should have said it before you even did it. Those are the two you're going to miss. And you know what leather and cedar smells like. It's obvious, but it's your, the environment that you're in. For me, it was two of the four tobaccos, I think. Ah, that was tough. Yeah. The tobaccos itself, I, I need a lot of work when it comes to smelling a tobacco. Connecticut, maybe I'd get, but the other ones are tough. Well, because we, we even smell in tobacco of what tobacco is this. And I've done it so much in, in the bonds and stuff mm-hmm. uh, of smelling it, but it, it's one of them. But to, to smell the different ones and, and do that, very, very interesting. The Pro Palette kit is a $300 kit. It's a serious buy to end up doing it. I bought one. Jonathan bought one, and not only bought one, you took it home. Took it home and played, and uh, I'm not going to lie. We When I said, this is what we're going to play tonight, what we do a game night on Tuesday nights in my apartment. Bunch of people. Bunch of people. So uh, this is what we're going to play tonight. Ah, that's stupid. We're not doing it. And I'm like, we're going to play the game twice. It'll take all the 10 minutes, and then we'll put it away, and we'll play the regular game <coughs> that we scheduled to play. Everybody agrees, and we start playing. We get through. Everybody smells everything. We mix them up, and now they're addicted. We go through the first round, we go through the second round, and they go, come on, just one more time. And I'm like, nope, you guys all poo-pooed this. We're going to put it away. We'll play the regular game, and we'll play it again next time. But it'll be the game that we play every Tuesday as the first game because people are loving it. Great, fun. It's a lot of fun, and it really is amazing. You get into the second round, how your your uh, brain and, and nasal passages start to trick you into – playing the game against yourself you start doubting what it is you're smelling and i'll tell you if you if you get the kit go with the first thing you thought that's Cause, correct cause that's because that is the yeah. correct answer um so I, we, we, I think andy sanchez says your wife is going to take half that kit <laughs> <laughs> and, and all the good ones right oh, i um, hate you too so we have the book cigar bliss uh 34.99 maybe yeah um that's available on twoguyscigars.com. We bought 150 books, so we got a lot of them. Um, the book is awesome. Uh, the kit is awesome, but that's a $300 thing, and I bought a dozen or so of the kits. Um, they're not in the system yet. No, so- they'll be in on Monday, uh, somewhere between 10 and 11, but if you call any time after 10, if it's not on the web yet. Just, just call Barry. He likes the people to call him anyway. <laughs> we'll get into that yeah. in the after show. Yeah, one 224 Four two seven two or one triple eight two cigar two. I think he gets lonely, is what it is, Dave. Yeah, I don't think enough people call and just talk to Barry for yeah. the sake of talking to Barry. No, usually they want to buy their stuff and, <laughs> and get off the phone, and there's other people too. But anyway, uh, I had a, a, lo- a great time with Nick Cutro. If, if you're listening, Nick, I'm going to get to chapter six tomorrow. Uh, is my plan and uh, finish it off. But uh, I learned so much reading the book. I learned so much more going through the kit 
of it. Uh, I talked to some, uh, actually three different cigar manufacturers during the course of the week, and I asked them. Um, they did it with Nick, and they said, oh, my God, it was a game changer for us, too. People that have been in the business their whole life. Well, because and, people that work with tobacco, they smell tobacco, and they go, okay, this is what well-fermented American broadleaf smells like. They're not looking for the flavors that, say, a magazine that's writing an article about the, the cigars or rating the cigars are looking for, what consumers are looking for. This gives you a window into the cigar smoker, and if you are a cigar smoker, it sharpens your palate this to is a razor sharp. This is going to be a game changer for the industry. Everybody's going to step up their game and start understanding this thing, and it's going to change everything. I think he did it. I think something has happened here. And uh, last week we, we launched it. Here it goes. We'll see what ends up happening to it. But if you're really into it, you, you owe yourself to end up going through the process. Uh, not an easiest read of all. Let me tell you, getting through the first couple of chapters is, is tough because it gets very technical. After that... It's awesome. It gets a lot easier. Um, Even the technical part of it. He's a good writer. Yeah. There's a nice ebb and flow to the book. You just you. I take it in smaller check chunks. You know, do 15 minutes um, in the morning and 15 minutes at night, so I'm not overwhelmed because a lot of information. Yeah, there is. Um, okay, um, we're going to give away something every single month for Cigar Authority listeners, Barry. Every I know single week. He's typing something. I want to make sure you're ready. Yep. Okay. Uh, what's the story here? All right. So uh, we're going to be giving away this Squire Stratocaster branded Avo guitar from Davidoff, plus a free guitar lesson from our friend Jason Land at CigarNinjas.com. We're giving it away to a listener of the Cigar Authority, because unless you're listening, you cannot be entered to win, because you wouldn't know what to do. If you buy three Avo cigars, any line, any size, and put guitar in the add a comment section of your order, you're automatically in, and you get your name thrown into a hat with one chance to win next week. Simple, buy three Avo singles from twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. Nobody will know unless you're listening to put guitar in the comment section and your odds are great. If you're a care package member, we will be happy to add them or anything to your care package at the end of the month so you won't be charged shipping. Better yet, if you buy any box of Avos, any size, any line, and put guitar and add a comment about your order, you get 10 chances to win, and the cigars you get will be free shipping anyway. And next Saturday, December 12th, we will pick a winner at the top of the show and then show you next week's prize. So head over to twoguyscigars.com, purchase three Avos, or buy a box. And each day, each week, this month of December, we're going to give away something special just to you, our listeners. Yeah, so, and, and to clarify, next week's prize will not be Avo, it'll be something else, but it'll be spectacular like that, and it's not going to happen within our stores or anything like that. It's just, just to listen, as little something to do at Christmas time each week, and, uh, we're also going to continue to do our um, emails, best emails of the week, uh, and we'll start with that right now. All right. It is time for the Henry Clay Warhawk Best Email of the Week segment brought to you by Henry Clay Warhawk Cigars. And this week's prize is a flask, a triple jet lighter with a bullet punch on board, and also a bottle opener. It's about $100 value. And our first contestant... Writes to us via the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And this is David writing, Hello, Mr. Jonathan. A few months ago, the Cigar Authority started a contest for their listeners that the best emails would have a chance at a prize. As someone that has written many top-notch emails, more than one has made the show in the past. Also, whenever I've, I have visited two guys' locations, I've made it a point to buy my legal limit of cigars, always asking the question, what is smoking well, rather than only focusing on what's new. This is a Canadian? It is a Canadian. It is. Uh, oh, I, I didn't read the subject line. Why does the Cigar Authority hate Canada? <laughs> <laughs> that would have gone a long way. Uh, I figured a long-term loyal listener and customer like me that a free lighter would be a nice gesture. Then I penned a great email, my best to date, my message both questioned Mr. Jonathan's sexuality and lack of manliness with the hope that he would at least be considered. Upon sending you the email, Mr. Jonathan emailed me back saying that you loved it. And I quote, 
This made me LOL out loud with the out loud written in all caps. I thought this was in the bag. And not only did my email not win, it was not even read. Wow. To borrow from another show, I think you guys might be ash holes. <laughs> I can only imagine the reason that my email wasn't read is that you would have no choice but to award me the winner. And Dave might have to wedge his wallet open an inch, which is 2.54 centimeters, <laughs> and send it to Canada. Because there's centimeters over there as opposed yeah. to inches. 2.54. Yeah, that's funny. So... Yeah. Uh, that's David writing, and he's a, he's a contender this week. All right. David's good, and David is um, of Canada. I'm going to write there and put my notes here because you're going to forget who's who. David, Canada, wants to be a contender, right? That's it. Inch contender. All right. Inch. So I'll remember who he is. But right now, it is time for the Don Raphael Offer of the Day. Brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. You know me, you love them. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? $50. Hmm. Easy enough. I'm interested. Eat a slice of buttered bread. You'd yes. Have to, you'd have to get off your diet for a second to do this, but you have $50 for it. That was buttered with someone's foot. Hmm. You don't get to pick who, you don't, right? You don't. You don't even know. So it it's could be. No, you're gonna end up saying Barry butter that slice of bread. That's no. That's messed up. Could, I'm not how's doing your it. feet, by the way? You have foot uh, problems. Yeah, they're uh, 95% healed. All right, 95% healed. So it's not. I don't want to get his. <laughs> I don't want to get his foot syphilis in my I, mouth. I, I was thinking he would use Cranky Bob to butter the toast. Ah, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Crusty <laughs> foot. Yeah, that's uh, no. I'm out. That's one of our uh, Yeah, I'm out. I'm way customers. too focused on this keto thing, and no. Even, no? F- even a lot more money, no. No. You could do 100 times that amount. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. No, but, at 100 times, I'm, I might be back in. I might be back in. But no, nothing? No. How about if I butted a Pop-Tart with somebody's foot? Wow. Uh, you're getting closer. Then, yeah. <laughs> then it's so freaking good. <laughs> it's so, it'd be delicious. Wrote a song about it. <laughs> Have you ever put butter on a pop tart? It's so freaking good. Have you ever put butter on a pop tart? If you haven't, then I think you should. All right. The following message was submitted through the contact us page. This is number two. The cigarauthority.com and my good friend Nicholas has okay. at it again. His subject is I'll do it Dave's way and power rankings. Fine, Dave, I'll do it your way. God forbid your feelings get hurt. You've indicated that you really haven't liked the last few emails I've sent, and judging by your reaction to other people's emails, you seem to like boring questions, bland comments, and positivity. Not to mention, you've managed to get the entire chat room to hate me. I've got some guy named Nurse Rick sending emails calling me a dickhead, and you refused to speak to me when I came to visit six months ago. Wow. But I'm over that. It doesn't bother me anymore, not at all, so I'll play it your way, Dave. Here's a couple of questions I think you'll like. I have a desktop humidor. Do I leave the top open or should I close it? (laughs) If my cigar goes out before I finish it, what should I do? By the way, you guys are all wonderful and I love the show. Is this better, Dave? Is this honestly better than me pointing out that you guys have been compared to the Avengers? But a better comparison for those old enough to remember would be the Golden Girls. Clearly, Mm. Dave would be Betty White. Mm. And you can imagine her telling the coin story or the story about being stuck on a roof for 11 hours because she forgot how to climb down a ladder. But I won't say that because it might hurt Dave's feelings. Anyway, here's more positivity. The 2020 year-end power rankings go as Mm. follows. Number five, the ghost of Mr. J's dead marriage. Sorry, buddy. Keep your head up. (laughs) (laughs) Number four, the ghost of the dead cowbell. Number three. Barry's 37 weeks of summer vacation, two, Barry Stein, and number one in the power rankings by Nicholas, Barry Beliveau. So, mm. know who's getting my vote. And by the way, if your cigar goes out, just buy a new one. Yeah, that's all you have to do. All and right, so that's uh, ridiculous cigars. questions <laughs> in the Golden Girls. That's Nicholas with number two. <laughs> This is a contender for the Cigar of the Year. There's a reason for it. It's a really great cigar. This is Diablo Maduro. What do you think of it? Which one was the perverted one in the Golden Girls? Because that would be me. Blanche. Was it Blanche? It was Blanche. No, that was B. Arthur. 
No. no. Blanche was Rue the McClanahan perv. was the perv, wasn't it? Was yeah. It Which, McClanahan? That was Blanche. Her name was Blanche. Oh, okay. I never you watched it. Fucking so. idiot. But it figures you would know. <laughs> I watch it almost every night. It's a great show. It's a gay man's thing. So this cigar is uh, equal parts leather and brown sugar. Like if you stored your brown sugar in a leather satchel. Raw leather, too. This is not overly tanned leather. And not that far away from the Winston Churchill. Although Considerably milder. There's yeah, similarities. The base notes are very there. I, I was going to say, though, this one strikes me as more identifiable as a Davidoff product, right? You get a mm. tiny bit of the mustiness, sure. mm, which yeah. I didn't get at all, really, in the Winston right. Churchill. Yeah, I think the barrel aging, uh, yeah. scotch barrel, <laughs> hid the mustiness. This is... Uh, I would say the Winston Churchill would be this on steroids. You want mm. if you like the taste of this, but you need a little more oomph. You need flavors that pop as, a little more. As, and as much as I'm chain smoking these and loving these, I love the Winston Churchill better. Oh, it's late hour. It was you should like why don't I smoke this more often? Right. Uh, which I said about the Connecticut, not Connecticut, the classic Winston Churchill. When I smoke both of them, I like that even more. And now. After the show, I think I got to smoke the uh, classic Winston Churchill again because if I like that more than than the late hour, oh, yeah. it's crazy. How could I do it? But I did it the opposite that I had smoked the um, classic and then went to the late hour. Mm-hmm. Now what I have to do is go to the classic. Expensive you, thing you to got do, a but lot I have to, of smoking to do. I, I got to do it, but this That's time, this time. Yeah, there's always time. Yeah, so we'll get to that, and we'll get to more of the show when we come back. We're going to take a break, and we're going to pick the best email of the week. We got a classic three way to get to, and lots more. Stick around. We are the Cigar Authority, live from the Toscano Cigar Sound Stage. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. <laughs> Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada Number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General Warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican Cigar Manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, 
Nicaragua and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, handmade, premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Surgeon General warning, tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. This is George Padron from Padron Cigars. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back with Smoking Avo Maduro. It's a contender for the Cigar of the Year. Get your votes in if you have the, you've bought in the pack of the contenders. Get your votes in. We need them. And we have to make a final decision coming up soon. So get those uh, to you. Also, um, we mentioned the Avo Fender. Avo Stratosphere. It's an Avo Stratocaster by Squire. And uh, David Webster just asked in the chat room, making it complicated, but I said I would ask, if you bought nine singles, do you get three entries? Because it's one entry for three cigars. So it's a compound. Yes, you get three. Yes, yes. Yes. So, David, your answer is yes. If you buy mm. multiples of three. But if you're buying nine singles. If you're buying nine, you might as well just buy a, buy a box, box. Get the discount, get the free shipping, and get the ten chances. There you go. But that's my sales pitch to you. Uh, that's what we do all the day here, uh, which, by the way, on the after show, we're going to talk about our sales pitch. And, and uh, some guy beats Barry to, to, to smithereens. You, you oh, wanna I, wanna... Got, I got a lot to say. <laughs> you, got a, you got a lot to say? Well, uh, what is this picture I'm seeing on uh, v- video number two here? Man, so, you guys uh, are fast. So John Sheeran sent this, who owns uh, Original Seed Cigar Shop in Adams, Massachusetts. And... Uh, Guy's fast. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's fast. It's oh, been God. five minutes. Yes. He got our faces for people listening on the podcast that don't watch this mess. Uh, the, he's got the classic picture of the Golden Girls and superimposed over everybody's face is our faces. And I'm B. Arthur, I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> that seems about right. <laughs> I'm the B. Arthur of the Golden Girls. Is that who I am? Oh, my God. And oh Sullivan is uh, Estelle Getty. Yeah. And I'm Rue McLennan. All right, I'll take right. it. The hot one? I'll take it. Is she the hot one? Yeah. <laughs> is the there one. a hot one? <laughs> there is a hot one. She's the one who gets all the action. Yeah. And, Sean, I sent it to your uh, Facebook messenger on your phone since you guys can't see the, uh, the screen from where you're sitting. <laughs> all right. I've they've had, they've I've had enough of that screen. one. Yeah, yeah that that, there's there. enough of that, my God almighty. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Um, so, yeah, uh, do the um, avos. You buy them. You go and you put the word guitar in the comment section. 
that's what's get you because people are buying them. Regular people are buying right. cigars. Yeah, the listeners, if you, if to you be don't the put ones guitar in it, you blew your chance. Yeah, because it, it'd be with everybody else, and your odds would be terrible. Your odds now are very good because it's only the people that listen to the Cigar Authority, right? And that's you know, it. Barry tells me some people are in the Cigar Authority care package. To get the good deal on the cigars, but they actually don't listen to the Cigar Authority. They're missing something, but also they get no chance either because they don't know. Listening, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going to try to start figuring that because I want to take care of the people that bother to listen to this mess. And we've got to try to take care of those people. That's what we're doing in the month of December. Um, we try to do it all the time, but we're going to do it a little more in the month of December. Wait till you see what we, what we got coming next week, also. Really? Which is another good one. Good, good prize. Mm. It's a prize that I want. I want this There's prize. There's very few things you want. Correct. These things that come in and out of some. Dave, you want one but for yourself? To, no, I don't to want To be it. clear, you're not eligible. I'm not eligible. No. Yet. No. And there's, tried, only, uh, and there's only one. Davidoff raffled off a, uh, a liquor cart. As part of the mm. um, event, and he tried to buy it in cash from the right. guy. Who? No who, dice. No. Yeah. No we dice. Would not, would not do it. And uh, at any price, he wasn't even a drinker. It's a liquor cart, and the guy wasn't even a drinker. But he said, "I'll give it to somebody else." And I just kept going up and up. And I'm like, "All right, just keep it." Hmm. Done playing. It made for good entertainment. Anyway. So, how good is this prize? Should I resign so I become eligible? Was it that good? Well, you'll tell me after the show. Call we'll, Rampage we'll wants to know if it's going to be a, a new Floby. <laughs> no. <laughs> but Floby, huh? Yeah, it was in the news this week. Yeah. And uh, if you missed it, Floby is making the big comeback. Yeah. It wasn't because of me, which it should have been, but who's the George guy? Clooney uses, George Clooney has been using a Floby for years, according to TMZ. Yeah, they said like 30 years, which mm-hmm. I've been using yeah. mine for 30 years. And uh, George Clooney, Clooney is. The most irresistible guy? Or he, I, I can see know. the resemblance, Jonathan, though. Could you, could you tell us? I can see us? the resemblance. Do you find him irresistible? He's pretty handsome. Yeah. He's and handsome. that's because he uses the Floby. <laughs> it's part of the, the Floby. Yeah, it has nothing to system. do with his, his distinct square chiseled jawline. It's just because he uses the Floby. Is that it's a jawline thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's his hairdo. It's <laughs> <laughs> He's got the salt and pepper thing going on. Salt and pepper. Yeah. But he's been using it for years now. You got to go back and look at old movies and stuff, and you see, well, yeah, it is the Floby. Because mm. when you're a Floby guy, you know <laughs> Floby people. It's like you know, and you do a little, there's a little hand signal. I can't tell you yeah. what it is, <laughs> but you'll know when you get the. Floby. It's like I can look at another bald guy and know that's you know, right. What he's got going on. That's right. Yeah. And you guys do a little wink to each other. And, we do. Yeah, we do. All right. Okay. Um, let's get to the matchup of the week. And it's brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair Cigars. Um, today, uh, it's this versus that, right? Wear a onesie. I own one. Do you? Yeah. 24-7 for a year. So you own one with a drop seed, right? Yep. That's for easy access, right? So you can poop. You don't have to take it off when it's cold. <laughs> or, 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 yes. Or. <laughs> but there's a lot of logistical problems with that. A year? A year. So you've yeah. got to wear it when you shower? No. But oh, all right. When you go out, you've got to wear it work. work. <clears throat> it's a onesie. That's what you're going to wear all the time. Versus a horse's head costume for just a straight month. Hmm. I'm going to go with the onesie. It's more comfortable. I'd like to see you in a onesie. I'm yeah. willing to pay for that. I, I think could, that if could he be. wears a onesie, he hasn't lost enough weight yet. It would still be considered a 12 But <laughs> yeah. Touche. I was thinking that. Uh, yeah. Barry's correct. I mean, I don't go anywhere except here anymore. And you, you could actually improve some of your outfits by wearing a onesie. Absolutely. And it already now, has the feet built in. Could oh. I could I have different ones, like stylish ones, as yeah. long as it's a yeah, one? As long oh, as a, I'm in. So how about like a, somebody, a mechanic? They got a onesie, basically, yeah. right? Yeah, and I'm thinking I'll get a tuxedo onesie for the when formal When you dress it up. Yeah, dress it. Sure. Yeah. It says, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm cool, Sullivan. but yeah. we're relaxed. It and could it, be a it, thing. You get one with a little hoodie on it, you'll feel like a Teletubby. Yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> Yeah, I'm nice, going onesie. Nice purple onesie for Barry. That's a unanimous call on that. All right. It was, it was a Although, horse's head. Hang on a second. You, you could make an argument for the horse's head that you no longer have to worry about wearing a mask because your nose and mouth would be covered. You're wearing a mask. 
That would be the mask for a month. But you get to take it off when you shower. Yes. I'm Sleep. changing. I'd like to be the horse head. Horse head? I'm going you, horse head. You, you're good at always well, going the opposite I, direction I, and making a reason I think for you're it. more likely to be the other end yeah, of the Yeah, I was horse. just taking the horse's <laughs> ass. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have, right now, we have two emails. One is David from Canada. Um, Calling and, you a cheapskate. Yeah, I want to be... Um, so many inches to a uh, Your wallet, wallet. Yeah. thing. 2.54, I think. There yeah. we go. And the second email was Nicholas with ridiculous questions and the golden girl that sparked some attention. So I'd say that's looking really good right now. But you have number three, which you think. Number three, I best. think. Uh, yeah. This is uh, submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And the subject line is Vindication and More. Lots to unpack from this episode. This is last week's episode with Nick Kutro. As a Mr. Jonathan fan, I am proud that he has been vindicated by all of this. I myself have tasted unique things such as Idahoan dried baby red mashed potatoes, mm. creamed corn, cherry danish, and French bread crust. The letter from Malcolm told me, and you'll remember Malcolm kind of shit all over me there for a bit and, and won because of it. Uh... The letter from Malcolm told me more about him than it did about Mr. Jonathan. After all, Malcolm confessed to always coming back for more of Mr. Jonathan. Barry, insert joke here. No, pass. Nothing? <laughs> not, well, not for, I am not giving you the pleasure of yeah. that. <laughs> a Dave Christmas album is a great idea, and I would definitely buy it. <laughs> oh, I'll have my card number. <laughs> Please charge me now. The album title could be Cigars and Screeches, and this is Jonathan writing. Well, it shows he has no taste because he wants a Christmas album and he likes Jonathan. It's funny. It Hello. was good. It, so, Dave, how uh, about a, a special holiday show where we do some caroling for our listeners? Maybe, maybe the Christmas show oh, or something. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. I'm going to be sick all day. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be here for that. Yeah, I don't like singing in front of people. You make you're, me do it all the time. You're like, oh, this will be funny. It's just to get the idea. Somebody has to do it to get the idea, and then we'll have it formally done, which is what we said we were going to do at Jose Dominguez, and we just left it the way it is. But I think we go and get a, I don't know about an orchestra, but we have a band. Oh, nice. Do it. I right? like it. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm not doing it. All because, right, so we have Nicholas's. The ukulele, yeah. so somebody did. It's very nice. Yeah. We have Good Nicholas's job power rankings. We have the guy calling Dave a cheapskate for not uh, letting him win from Canada, and we have uh, the vindication email. So who's, uh, who's I'm going to vote for Nicholas with an assist to John Sheenan from Original Seed Cigar Lounge. Yeah, that uh, assist. Uh, yeah, you, you carried you it on. Made that email, so I'm going with number two. And did Nicholas win before? Uh, I don't believe Nicholas mm -hmm. has won. He hasn't written in a long time. No, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the last one, um, Jonathan. I don't know. Hmm. No, last one. The last one. Yeah, the last one was Jonathan. The last hmm. one was Jonathan. Then we had David writing early on. Okay, who is not one? I don't think any of these guys have won. Okay, Nicholas writes in a lot though. He does. He never won. He hasn't written in in about six months since you snubbed him. All right, so I'm going to give it to Nicholas. He's number two. I say we give it to John for making the graphic. And so you have the <laughs> same guy, right, Nick, Nicholas, Nick, yeah. with, with the Golden Girls. <clears throat> yeah, it's the right answer, but John really helped it along. All right, yes. so it's Nicholas with the assist. Nicholas, just shoot me your email address. You've got my email. Uh, no. Shoot me your uh, street address. Right. And you can and stop, uh, stop hating on me. May, <laughs> maybe Nicholas can give the bottle opener to John or something, but that's for them to work out. Yeah. He's in Rhode Island. It's a quick drive. All right, I want to say it again. Thanks for liking and sharing and doing all the stuff you do for the Cigar Authority. It helps us out a lot. The people that watch us on YouTube, I love that you watch and you're on the chat box and we get to be live with you. By the way, Rob J says you cheaped out by not giving it to number one, validating number one's email. <laughs> yes, I, I continued my reign of being a cheapskate. My wallet only opens point, yeah, so many centimeters. Once you heard Canada, you said, no way. I'm not spending the postage on that. We can send it to Canada, though, right? Yeah, it's, it's not cigars. Yeah, there's no, no cigars. cigars so there's yeah. no, so that's no okay. Yeah. That's okay. He'll get it sometime in yeah. February. You probably have to do a customs form and everything. You don't want to go down that path. Yeah. Um, so back again, people subscribing and stuff. You got to get us on the podcast. You got to subscribe to the podcast because I'm afraid two weeks from now, we're going to be off of YouTube. I hope it doesn't happen, but I think we're going to be off Facebook 
and then YouTube will follow. Hmm. So the 18th might be the last show that we get on, and then they say, okay, there's advertising on here, and you're gone. Ed Sullivan, I have a question for you because I'm confused. Yes. I'm confused because I saw something in print that confused me, All right. but I've heard Dave say it, so now I don't know which one is correct. All right. How do you say the single shot of coffee that is, is very strong tasting, usually order it by the shot? Espresso. Espresso. Okay. Espresso. Yeah. Espresso. Because in the book that Nick Cutro wrote... And on his slides during the presentation, he wrote Espresso. And I know you proofread some of that yes. shit. <laughs> and so I, I thought think, it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you're both Italian. I think that, I think that either you both say it wrong or is there is it possible that there's another spelling of it? Or it's just Espresso? I, I've and never seen it spelled with an X. I have, but when, it's, when Dave's sending well, me an email. Yeah. All right. E-Expresso? No? No. Espresso. E-S. Espresso. See, I, now I'm all messed but up. But even if it says espresso, it's pronounced espresso. No, I don't think it is. By me, it's espresso. Yeah, by you and you alone. And, and Nick. And Nick Kutcher. All right. Just the yeah. Italians who invented espresso. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's the truth. No? I'm going with it anyway. Ma right. Dave, maybe you could subscribe to a service that delivers a different espresso every month. And, and I bet you you're going to start saying subscribe. Uh, well, I hope not. No? no? This is why I didn't have a career in, in broadcasting. <laughs> it's becoming evident. This is why it happened. It's a two-guys thing because, you know, Pete, who's in Nashua, and he's the guy that boxes up most of the orders, he calls it Kovic instead of COVID. Yeah. And I find myself saying Kovic now. And what happened to coronavirus? Why did that go away? Corona. We know how to say Corona because we say it all the time. Why did that go away? Why does I, it keep changing its I, name? I think there are multiple coronaviruses. Yeah, the common cold is a coronavirus. So I think COVID. So it wasn't scary enough that they had a well a COVID. It has to be like a COVID-19 even. It's a very specific one. Jonathan says sometimes he got the HIV, but he means... <laughs> Coronavirus. <laughs> I've never said. I've never said that, and I don't mean coronavirus. I mean the HIV. Uh, really? If I were to say that, which I'm not admitting sure, to, sure. Also, yeah. no, also known as a botulism, which comes from bad meat in a can. Ah. <laughs> Sean Stevens thinks Jonathan should wear a donkey head for a month. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the classic three-way. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. It's time for this day in classic history. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. With prices as low as $1.50, this cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth. The Classic Maduro is bold, but never overpowering. The Classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness. And the Classic Cuban is a real knockoff of the taste and flavors from old-time Havanas. Classic cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes, ranging from $1.50 to $2.25 per cigar, which makes Classic the most affordable premium handmade cigar in America. Classic cigars. Before you start, in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which has been the dictionary since 1828, espresso is a word. It's a less common variant of espresso. So get off my back, everybody. <laughs> it's espresso. This is huge. Total vindication. I've been totally vindicated. No. And you, you got anything on subscribe? Yeah, we'll work on that one. Yeah. Classic three way. Uh -huh. All um, right. Ed Sullivan is our champion. I, I don't know what happened I last week. Is, I wasn't yeah. a part of last week. Did yeah. everyone lose or something? The Kutra yeah, we didn't on. have one last week because we oh, ran. we right. never got it. Yeah, so you are our reigning uh, champion, Dave. I, I know you're going to want to know this from, yeah. from Bob Fish. The official scientific name of the coronavirus causing the current pandemic is SARS-CoV-2, but the disease itself is known as COVID-19. So it's a SARS disease. It is SARS. The SARS virus. Yeah. And what's the COV? I don't know. Short for COVID. SARS becomes COVID, SARS-CoV, I don't know. We're not going to figure it. It's not our job, really. But it came out as coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Boom, right from the start. You know, what, it went away. Nobody says it anymore. Why don't I see if I can get Fauci on next week see to we explain can it? Yeah, right. yeah he, he's got enough 
wrong so far, so <laughs> we'll figure out what's happening. Today is December 5th. Walter Elias Disney was an American entrepreneur, animator, writer, voice actor, and film producer. He pioneered American uh, the American animation industry. He introduced several developments for production of cartoons. As a film producer, Disney holds the records for the most Academy Awards earned by an individual and won 22 Oscars. He was born today. Walter Elias Disney, born today, Ed Hi. Sullivan. Hi. 1882. 1882, says Mr. Jonathan. 1900. 1900. 1901. 1901. I can't believe it. Somebody has three points. No, he has two points. Barry Stein. Damn it. 1901. You went 1900. You went 1901 for two points. I thought he was old when he did Mickey Mouse. I guess he was relatively young. Barry gets two points. Barry's a winner. And it's a wiener. It's going over to Mr. Jonathan. Richard Wayne Penniman, also known as? Penn & Teller. Or Penn from Penn & Teller. Little Richard. Damn it. Was an American singer, songwriter, musician, nicknamed the architect of rock and roll. Richard's most celebrating work from the mid-50s. That's a hint. With his charisma, showmanship, and pounding backbeat and raspy vocals led to the foundation of rock and roll. He died six months ago, but he was born today. Good golly, Miss Molly. 1919. 1919. 1925. 25. 1931. 1931 for the point. 32. Oh, I almost said that and then thought I'm going down one. Always go your first instinct, yeah, they say. I feel like such a fool. Yeah. Um, it's over to Barry Stein, speaking of fools. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, where did that come from? He's very sensitive. Be careful. Okay. Die today. We're going with die today. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart died today. You mean Already? Mozart? Mozart. No, yeah, it's the, okay. It's a T at the, the end. The T becomes Zart. a K. It is. It is. <laughs> Already competent on the keyboard Can we look and violin. Up if there's uh, two pronunciations of that? He composed from the age of five and performed before European royalty. Mozart died in his home on December 5th at the age of 35. Hmm. 35. What year was that? He died. I don't even know what century. 1841. 1841. I'm going to go uh, 1782. 1782. 1400. 1400. <laughs> uh, 1782 will take the point. 1791. Mm, pretty close. Not pretty bad. Close. Uh, and, and you know what? That makes you tie with Barry right now. Two to two to zero. <coughs> and over to the zero, Mr. Jonathan. Historic bus boycott begins in Montgomery, Alabama by Rosa Parks. She wouldn't move to the back of the bus in a changed history. It happened today. What year? 1950. 1950, says. 1951. 51. I had 1956. 56 is one over. 51 goes to Barry. It's 55. Barry gets a point. We got three to two to goose egg, Mr. Jonathan. One question minus left. Minus two. Minus two. Minus two. He's looking at him because he says you went one above me just to screw me, right? Mm. That's what he does. He doesn't. Um, last question. It's three to two to zero. I got two tiebreakers in case. <laughs> Barry Stein. Ocean's Eleven, starring George Clooney, the user of the Floby. <laughs> Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, and Julia Roberts premiered today. What year? Ocean's Eleven. 1999. 1999. 92. 92. In the year 2000. 2000 for the point. 2001. So we have a winner. Three to two to one. At least she wasn't shut out. Barry Stein is our new champion. This is important because we're getting down to the end of the year. We're not Mr. at the end of the year yet. Mr. Jonathan usually takes it at the end of the year. He studies. And he's the mm -hmm. champion for the year. And that's what ends up happening. I'm, I'm kind of glad Barry's the champion. It takes a lot of pressure off me. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I worry about this all week. All right, you don't study for it. No, I had. But a, uh, it's a background sort of simmering worry. I, I had a cup. I had a music one here. Two, two at the end for you to win. Uh, Band on the Run. What year premieres? 
1974 four Three. or five. 73. Ugh. So I got and, two points. And uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus. I don't on, on the BBC. Circus no, I would think you would be a Monty Python fan. 1972. No? Uh, 68. 69. 74. You know, you weren't a Mon Monty Python fan? So yeah. I would have had three points you? right there. I would have been tied with Barry Stein if you, you didn't have, have this bullshit tiebreaker nonsense. And if your aunt had balls, she'd be your uncle, but you didn't get it. <laughs> See, I really I really like Faulty, faulty Towers. I liked. Mm. Good show. Yeah. Good show. What do you think of Avo Maduro? I Contender really, for the Cigar of the Year. I really like it. We've never well, had a Maduro win. No. Cigar of the year. If there's ever been one, this there's, there's actually a few in the contenders this year. This compared to the Winston Churchill is less filled. It burns considerably quicker. Mm -hmm. You're getting. I know you're p paying almost twice as much for the Winston Churchill, but I think you get more cigar. You get more smoke time. Not that this is bad, but if you're looking for a fuller flavor, you're, you're not wasting your money. Doubling down and, and getting a, a cigar that's going to smoke twice as long. Winston Churchill late See, hour. I've become a big fan of it today. I, I think that was a good call on your part, Mr. Jonathan. That was a heavy cigar. Right. It yeah. was really noticeably Gram weight heavy. wise, it was yeah. like, wow, this thing is a tank. And you would think, like, there's it's obviously a lot leather. of tobacco in there. You would think maybe it would be a tough draw, but it was a perfect draw. Yeah, yeah, perfect good. cigar. It was wrapped in leather. For sure. <laughs> yeah. That's what it. Felt like and tastes like it was good. Chewy, great cigar. Yeah, you knew you smoked a cigar. The, the, uh, I'm not taking anything away from the Avo, but it is not. Uh, it's not fair to have this be the second cigar. It should have really been the other way around. Just because, compared to the Winston Churchill, the late hour, this is a, a bit of a letdown for my palate. It's but, very good, but I just Jonathan, wish it was stronger. The structure of the show kind of dictated. Yes, the, today because Winston Churchill. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So that's what we get. <laughs> yeah, whatever. The guy's the the ambassador of both of them. He could we could have done it either way. Could have done it either way. Okay, uh, that's it for the show. Um, what do I have in my notes next week? Um, We're gonna train we, cigar smokers. Yeah, we have an Avo Fender guitar to give away. You know the trick. Guitar There's in the comments. Squire section. Stratocaster. Oh yeah, it's, it looks like a Fender. It looks like a Fender. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to give it away at the top of the show next week, and then we'll lay it again on to telling you what we're going to give away later on. Uh, great prizes all month of December, and uh, we are going to talk about training the customer like a dog next week. See what you think about that. Wait till you hear the after show, too. We're going to train... We're going to train Barry. Barry, like a dog. <laughs> yeah, see how that goes. Not That'll happening. Be... I got a lot to say. All right. Um, that's it. We're live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you've been listening to the Cigar Authority and the United Podcast Network. And it's quite possible that you actually learned something today about cigars, which makes you the Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.